Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The set of real numbers is uncountable. So, let's first remind ourselves what it means for a set to be countable. Given a set A, to say that A is countable means that we can enumerate the elements of A over the positive integers, right? So as you can imagine, we've listed out all of the elements of A, and this list goes on forever. So we have given any element X in A, well, X must then belong to this list. So X must be equal to one of these guys, which means we say x is equal to ai for some positive integer i, right? And so that is what this means. To say that a set is uncountable means we cannot enumerate the elements of a set in this way. Okay, now to prove that r is uncountable, we are going to use the following theorem. we're going to use the nested intervals theorem, which says if we're given a nested sequence of closed bounded intervals, I1, I2, I3, and so on and so forth, then there exists a real number that belongs to every single one of these closed bounded intervals. So visually, let's say that our closed bounded interval I1 looks something like this. Well, then I2 is a closed bounded interval contained in I1, maybe something like this. I3 is contained in I2. I4 is contained in I3. And so on and so forth. As you can imagine, this sequence will go on forever. But it turns out that there exists a real number that belongs to every single one of these closed bounded intervals. And that is really what this theorem is saying. Okay, so now let's prove that the set of real numbers is uncountable. We'll assume for a contradiction, we instead have that the set of real numbers is countable. Well then, what this means is, is we can enumerate the elements of R over the positive integers, like we have here. In other words, we can list out the elements of R like this. So we have that for every real number X, well, X lies somewhere in this list. So X is equal to XI for some positive integer I. And that's the idea. So now we're going to construct a nested sequence of closed bounded intervals, I1, I2, I3, and so on and so forth. And the way we're gonna construct this sequence of closed bounded intervals is we are going to construct it so that x1 does not belong to i1, x2 does not belong to i2, x3 does not belong to i3, and so on and so forth. Now, as you can imagine, there has to be some closed bounded interval that does not contain x1. We'll call that closed bounded interval i1. For example, maybe that closed bounded interval is the interval which goes from x of 1 plus 1 to x of 1 plus 2, right? That closed bounded interval does not contain x1. So we're good. So i1 is just some closed bounded interval that does not contain x1. Well, now let's suppose inductively we have picked out a closed bounded interval ik which does not contain xk. 
from here, we want to pick a closed interval ik plus 1 that does not contain xk plus 1. And we want to pick ik plus 1 so that ik plus 1 is contained in ik. Because if we do that, that will guarantee that we will have constructed a sequence of closed bounded intervals that is nested. And that's the idea. So visually, ik looks something like this. And as you can imagine, ik contains at least two closed subintervals, which are disjoint. For example, these are two closed subintervals of ik, which are disjoint. In other words, these two closed intervals do not share any elements in common. So there's no way that xk plus 1 could be an element of both of these closed intervals, right? One of these closed intervals must not contain xk plus 1. And we're going to pick whichever one that doesn't contain xk plus 1 to be ik plus 1. So let's put this together now. We started out by picking a closed bounded interval i1 that doesn't contain x1. And then we supposed inductively we picked a closed bounded interval ik that doesn't contain xk. From there, we are able to pick out a closed interval ik plus 1 that doesn't contain xk plus 1. And we picked ik plus 1 so that ik plus 1 is contained in ik. So, as you can imagine, we have picked i1 so that i1 doesn't contain x1. Well, this argument shows if ik is i1, then ik plus 1 will be i2, and i2 will not contain x2, and i2 will be contained in i1. Similarly, i3 will be contained in i2, and i3 will not contain x3. i4 will be contained in i3, and i4 will not contain x4, and so on and so forth. So that's what this argument establishes. And so, this establishes a nested sequence of closed bounded intervals, such that xn is not an element of in for all positive integers n. Okay, but by the nested intervals theorem, there exists a real number xi such that xi is an element of in for all positive integers n. And then, since xi is a real number, this means that xi is somewhere in this list. So, xi is equal to xj for some positive integer j. But now, let's remind ourselves that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive integer. So in particular, it must work for the positive integer j. So taking n to be j, we have that xj is not an element of ij. And xj is equal to xi. So xi is not an element of ij. But also, since this statement is true, well, we know that this statement works for all positive integers. So in particular, it must work for the positive integer j. So taking n to be j, we have that xi is an element of ij. So we see that xi is an element of ij, and xi is not an element of ij. So we've reached a contradiction. Our assumption that the set of real numbers is countable leads to a contradiction. So we must instead have that the set of real numbers is uncountable. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.